hey everybody i'm on skype with connie potter hey connie hi alex now what people don't know about you i'm going to reveal right now you actually quilted the 2016 raja quilt or bom that's right thank you so much for doing that for us i want to talk a little bit about that quilt um it it there wasn't a lot of negative space to quilt fancy stuff right that's correct. So what did you think when you saw that quilt? Like, what were you going to do? Because, I, I, I mean, there's little feathers here and there. You know, what did you think when you saw that? Well, whenever I receive any quilt top, I go through a process. Which I call it marinating. Okay. And, um, I don't marinate the quilt, but um, <laughs> in my head, I marinate it. And uh, it doesn't matter. Every quilt top gets that kind of design scrutiny. And even if it's edge to edge, you have to figure out some kind of a pattern or design. And uh, with the Raja quilt, um, of course, the focal point, I feel anyway, is the center. Right. And once I figured out what I was going to be doing in the center, the background, and you're right, there's not a lot of resting space or background in this quilt. There's a lot of color to it. There's a lot of piecing. There's a lot of yeah. applique. And... Um, a lot of time involved in that. So I spent a lot of time obviously figuring out the design. And once I got the center pretty well figured out, then the rest of it came together. Uh, it's not that easy, it didn't take that long. <laughs> it took a while, it took about three or four days to figure it out. So really you marinate for that long? Well, not for every quilt top, <laughs> but for this, <laughs> for this one I did, yeah. I so felt it needed. So, okay, so let's not talk about that. Let's say I'm a customer coming to you because you do long arm for people locally and nationally and the whole bit, and you're up in the Pacific Northwest, right? You moved, right? Yes, I did. Because you were in Colorado, right? That's correct. So say that's how we found you, yeah. So um, I come to you with a quilt. Are you at all interested in what my ideas are, or is it kind of like, eh, just let me do it? No, absolutely. I mean, to this point, the client has put so much money and so much time and so much creativity in their project. They deserve that, mm -hmm. you know, um, design influence. And so, yeah, most definitely, uh, I, I hear them out. And um, then I ask them, would you like a few more ideas? And then can you kind of mesh that? Or do you, do you really want to have... Uh, sock monkeys all over the quilt or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> right. and, well, I don't say it that way. But, um, yeah, I definitely mesh with the client. So do you kind of have a checklist in your brain that you go through or like a set of base rules? Because I know I've got a set of base rules. So, Absolutely. So, like, what would you be willing to share a couple of those base rules or what do you call it? Um, sure. I call it my um, fundamentals, for lack of any other kind of a word. It's kind of like... Um, it's automatic now, and it's kind of hard to get off the bike and tell somebody how to ride the bike who's never ridden the bike before. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, because when you know how to ride a bike and you haven't ridden a bike for, you know, a decade or two, yeah. well, you're a little bit wobbly, but you get on and you remember how. So um, I'm getting on the bike right now. Some of the fundamentals that I always have are marinating. Um, definitely interfacing with the client and, and agreeing on not only the design, but, you know, there's a budget involved there. Right. Um, then also, I always make sure that the backing is square. I don't want any pleats in the back. Right. I always make sure, because I can't see it when I'm quilting. Right. And every time I turn the quilt, I feel back there. You know, I, I'm really kind of almost anal about it because I want to make sure that the backing looks just, just as good as the top. And um, also, I square, so to speak, I make sure that that quilt top has been basted. I always baste before I quilt. Make sure it is as square as possible um, because when that quilt comes off and it's all done, it's been bound and everything, I want to make sure that it drapes well on a bed as well as on the wall, where it's going to be showcased, um, and it's going to be draping even if you've done all of these fundamentals when you're quilting it. 
So yeah. you're talking about real technical fundamentals. You know, in other words, I know when I'm on my domestic, the basting is everything. That could make or break the whole thing right there, you know. Um, do you consider whether the person's going to have it? I mean, you've said it, but like, okay, if it's going to be a show quilt, a bed quilt, a wall quilt, what does that tell you as far as well, the quilting design? Well, I like to find out from the client how they're going to use this because I have done show quilts and I have done soft monkey quilts for grandchildren, you know, grandchildren. Yeah. So, um, but I treat them all the same as far as making sure that I, you know, making sure that that's going to be lovely. Right. Um, but anyway, they're, they're, so they're up front when I, at the quilt intake, I, I ask all these questions. At least I try to ask all these questions. How is it, how's the quilt going to be used? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. So, cause I think that's important. Like I learned if it's going to be used, if it's on a bed, you aren't going to want it tightly quilted. I mean, if it's a show quilt, you can have at it, you know, on the wall, uh, you know, the amount of density and all that. Now, what about the quilt behind you? Is that a client's or is it yours? That's mine. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, uh, a little bit of Hawaiian influence. Love Hawaii. And so I have to have, of course, it's summer. And so I have all of my spring and summer quilts hanging right now. And then um, know that this is going to be aired in the fall. But by that time, um, I'll have my fall quilts hanging. Nice. But this one is, um, has been totally freestyled um, as opposed to being digitized. Now, I have a... Gamel Statler stitcher. I didn't always used to have uh, a Statler, mm -hmm. about three years. And so I know how to, you know, freestyle or freehand, and I know how to uh, use the, the digitize. And so when a client comes, I know this wasn't your question, but it leads up to the quilt. That's another choice. Right, I can right, right. Freehand it or can digitize it. But this one was all um, freestyle. So, Connie, where do you live now in Washington? It's in uh, Ridgefield, which is just north of Vancouver. Okay, and so then how do people get hold of you if they would like you to do a quilt for them? Thank you for asking. I do have um, email. I have a blog. What's your blog? Uh, right. My blog is ppatchworks. Okay. Spot.com. Okay. And then they can go on contact me. There's there's little tabs at the top. Perfect. Contact me. They have my email, and then we can kind of chat by email, and then I can give a phone number, and then one thing leads Perfect. to another. And you do receive quilts again from all over, so yep. you know. And I'll tell you what, finding a good long armor is a really important thing. I, you know, I've got my Diane that's just uh, two blocks away, and it's just fantastic. So, yeah. Nice. So, thank you so much today for taking some time for us and th and for doing the Raja quilt. It was a, It's a challenging quilt. You're right, with all the piecing, with the applique. But, boy, those little feathers right in there and those white areas. Whew, so nice. <laughs> thank you very much. So nice. So, you have a good rest of the day, and... Um, Keep on quilting, lady. Thank you. I will. Thank you, Alex. It's nice to talk to you. Thank you.